classic EverQuest. I don't know about you, but I remember first watching this trailer. I had to have been 12 or 13 at the time. And uh, my brother and his friends were, they were talking about this game all the time. All they talked about was getting us into EverQuest. My mom, of course, was against it because she, she always didn't like video games in the first place. But this trailer, for me, just inspired nothing but like high fantasy thoughts and hopes. Like everything about this, even from 1999, it just looks so cool. And all all my friends, all my brother and his friends talked about was getting into this game and playing it. Um, it took quite a bit of time for us to finally get access to play it. And whenever we were able to finally get into this game and sign in, I had no idea how much it was going to change for me as far as expectations on video games, uh, you know, an MMO world. It's a video game. It was my first experience of playing a video game with other people. The, the mystery behind it all was so cool because it was basically endless po possibilities for me. I, again, I just had no idea how much it was going to change for me as far as what I expected from video games. And it's funny because, I mean, this trailer obviously, <laughs> as hilariously cringy as it is now, at the time, it was amazing it was groundbreaking i just loved i loved it from the second that i logged in and it's 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 funny to see this perspective because nothing in the game actually looks like this but it's a trailer you know you have to embellish a little bit to get everyone's interest uh but anyways what we're doing today as we're looking through this is i am going to rate, according to my opinion, some of the most important bosses in Classic EverQuest. We're going to cover Lady Vox, Lord Nagafin, Finical Atropos. Uh, there is one even, there's even a couple that were from remakes and stuff like that, or zone remakes back in the time, back in the day. But, you know, here we are. This is the first one that I can think of is Lord Nagafin. <laughs> As you can see, I mean, he kind of falls over quickly from me, but that's just that's just because I'm level 120. At the time, back in the day, Lord Nagafin was a hard fight. But the loot that he gave and the fun that it was getting to him and actually fighting him, it is really hard for me not to give Lord Nagafin, a high A tier rating. For me, A tier is the top. We're not going to do S tier and all this other stuff. I'm going to give Lord Nagafin an A tier rating. He didn't have much for hit points, but he was a really good time getting the raid together and killing. And I still remember always wanting a Cloak of Flames. And here we have Lady Vox. The trek to get to Lady Vox in the first place is one of the biggest annoyances I have to complain about. Getting there to Permafrost in the first place is annoying. Navigating through Permafrost is annoying. The fight for Lady Vox, it's a lot like Lord Nagavan, but just ice spells. And I, I mean, I still want to rate the fight. I, I want to give the, uh, the fight a high rating, but I just have to give it B tier. Strictly just because getting to Lady Vox is annoying. Getting there, dealing with the entire zone, just everything, navigating through it, I just, I have to give it a solid B tier. I love Ice Giants, I love Halas, I love Everfrost, 
but man, if you were not a barbarian already in that area, getting there was annoying. So yeah, I'm going to say Nagafin an A and Lady Vox, I'm going to have to give her a B. And here we have Plane of Hate. This place caused me so much grief back in the day. It looks really cool, really mysterious. It's very, very creepy. Especially if you're lower level and you're not here with competent individuals. If you are just here exploring by yourself, this place is not an easy zone to navigate. The only reason I'm able to find, go straight to Inarook is because I've just, number one, I have a map, but number two, I've done it dozens of times. Uh, Plane of Hate is one of the most confusing zones for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people, just for the sheer amount of buildings and the enemies that can aggro you through walls. Inarook looks awesome. He sounds awesome he sounds terrifying unfortunately i mean it's the same graphic but unfortunately i'm on a live server and this is the redone version of interrook so i can't really say what i think of what he was originally back in the day because i know the planes were released at a later patch for classic um i can't obviously i wasn't there for classic so i can't really give a solid vote for what I think of his fight from Classic. I know that he is one of many fights that was done later on. I will say the fight now is actually pretty cool because uh, there's it's one of the first by uh, one of the first fights I want to say you actually have mechanics. You you're required to kill the ads like the evangelist of hate. You're actually required to kill that Evangelist of Hate to even be able to kill Interrook in the first place. You can get him all the way down to 5%, but you can't kill him until the ads are dead as well. And it's not that, oh, you'll be punished if you do, it's just you physically can't. You will just get him to 5% and he will be locked. So you can see here I'm going through, I'm killing the ads, killing the Clerics of Hate, Got to kill a couple of those. And then you can kill the Evangelist of Hate. And see here, I'm sitting here swinging at him, but I'm not doing anything. Got to love being summoned. So in general, I love Enerook as a fight. I, I think he was really, really good. I have to give him a solid... Uh, I have to give him a solid A tier. It's one of the first bosses with an actual mechanic behind it. So we're going to give Interrook an A tier. And the loot that he drops, I can't say anything for the old loot back in the day. But I think it's, I think the loot that he drops now is pretty decent for the time frame. Uh, he's a level 70 fight now, so he's equal to Kazakh Thule. Uh, but I, I'd say he's, he's a pretty fun fight. Cool mechanic, cool graphic, he sounds good, he looks good, he's in Plane of Hate, I'm still going to give him an A. And next up we have Finical Atropos. I'm sure I'm pronouncing the name different than many of you. I really, really dislike the underwater fight in EverQuest. It is very poorly done. It is super annoying and frustrating to go through, especially if you don't have any gear with like uh, underwater breathing on it. It's a hard time. It is a very hard time. <laughs> Finical Atropos is not a hard fight though. You can basically beat him with like a group of level 60s, especially if they're mages. So as far as ease of access, he is very easy comparatively compared to the other bosses. Uh, I mean, he's obviously going to be more difficult than like Carafirm and Vox, not Carafirm, uh, Nagavin and Vox. Uh, so he's really not that difficult. The loot that he drops is just really, really not that good. I want to say 
let's look at catch keep I want to say most of what he's good for is just the achievement and also he's he's level 53 so he's just barely he's just about the same he's actually easier than not at Nax and uh, than Vox and Nagafin he's actually easier so I stand corrected I was thinking I was thinking of somebody else I thought he was level 60 so most of the gear that he drops <laughs> not good very very not good comparatively speaking but wow <laughs> he's hard he's hardly even a raid encounter he's got a 12 hour respawn uh, he runs at low health. There's just, there's not much to say about Finnegal Atropos other than getting to him is the most annoying boss on this list. Of all the other bosses, I have to say he's the most annoying because you have, especially you have to go all the way to Fade where you have to run through Butcher Block Mountains, then you have to run through Dagnor's Cauldron, and then you have to go all the way underwater and then all the way through that maze to get to him. He's a great achievement. I think he's technically what a lot of people would say is he's kind of like the end game boss for classic EverQuest because at the time there was no planar there was no planar gods. And he's higher uh, I, I keep saying he's higher level level than Lord Nagafin, but let's see here. Lord Nagafin. Okay, so he's Lord Nagafin's level 55. So Nagafin and Vox are both 55. That's what I thought. So Finnegal is level 53. So they drop way better loot than him. They're just better bosses. So Finnegal Atropos, I'm sorry, I have to get a C. An absolute C tier for me. And here we actually have the Planar Gods. This is Plan of Fear. Again, these were introduced at a later patch in the original EverQuest. So I feel like they were already better prepared to make raid bosses by that time. They had a much better understanding for what people were planning on doing to Zerg bosses down. So I really feel like they were prepared to give people a challenge with the planes. And Plane of Fear is hands down my favorite original plane that they introduced because everything about it was terrifying. Especially as an individual who didn't have, uh, I didn't have much of a raid group or anything, so the only time I ever went into Plane of Fear was people just making groups and going in to take out bosses. So we would just try to zerg stuff down, and it never worked out well for me. Plane of Fear was terrifying. Everything Saul and Viz, everything ag aggroed you from across the map, basically, they were hard fights. And what was even better... Uh, there were several bosses, several worthwhile bosses hitting in Plane of Fear. You have the three golems, which were already terrifying because they could death touch you. And at the time, death touch was a for sure kill because death touch, I think, used to originally hit for 10,000. I think that was the original amount that death touch hit you for because it, we're talking classic EverQuest. No one had over 10,000 hit points. I think in Classic EverQuest, like the highest that you would ever see a warrior or a tank's HP get to is maybe 5,000. And that is if they're like geared to the teeth. So anyways, whenever you're in a raid, you sent in squishies. Or you would send in, uh, I used to call them squishies. You would send in people who were meant to be death touch fodder. At the time, we always joked that they were rangers. Everyone always hates on rangers anyways, but we would send in rangers to, to, to take the death touch because they weren't really doing anything anyways. <laughs> and I know everyone always shits on rangers in classic, but that's just how it is. But we would send in rangers, we would let them take the death touch, and then we would start fighting the boss. And it's, it's still funny because still to this day, on Project 1999, if I see, like, one of my favorite streamers, if I see any of them hitting Plane of Fear, I still love to sit and watch. 
the environment still just there's something about the environment in Planet Fear that is just so creepy and awesome and like unnerving that it's just such, it's such a good time for me to watch it. The bosses drop that like one of the first illusion clickies, uh, which is the amulet of necropotence. It turns you into a skeleton. It's an instant cast skeleton illusion, which is usable by anybody. So that's been always like one of my most fond classic items. Like one of the most I'm the most fond of is like the amulet of necropotence. Uh, there's a couple druid weapons like you see here that I I just fucking loved. So the the, the, the golem fights I have to give an A tier in Plane of Fear. I know I'm gonna kind of break it down in planes just because there's so many fights, but at least for the golems I have to give them an A tier. I think they're awesome fights. They have su they have a death touch for God's sake, which is like super creepy and scary. Uh, every, I, they're just awesome. So I have to give them an A tier. As you can see here, unfortunately, again, I'm on a live server. So we don't have the original Kazakh graphic or the original Kazakh Thule. Because canonically, in EverQuest, in one of the later expansions, Kazakh Thule actually dies. Not just his avatar, but his whole being, he's dead. So what they did is they replaced Kazakh with this boss that we see here. And there's here's another boss, the Dracolich. Uh, one of the more low-end bosses. God, I, I hate the ads so much. They always piss me off because they dispel you. But Kazakh Thul, as a boss, again, it's been remade, so I can't comment on the original as far as how hard he was or what he would drop. Because unfortunately, I don't know. The redone version drops fantastic loot. He's also level 70, so that's not something you would see people trying to take out in classic EverQuest. In general, I, I'm going to give Plan of Fear an A ranking. I really think Plan of Fear is my favorite original boss zone for classic EverQuest. It trumps Lord uh, Nagafin, Lady Vox, all the other planes. I just absolutely love. And I know there's another plane called Plane of Sky. I will not touch or comment on Plane of Sky. I have such little experience with it because that zone used to terrify me. Because the death touching enemies, getting keyed for the different islands and stuff, my guild never wanted anything to do with Plane of Sky. So unfortunately, I'm going to skip over Plane of Sky. I can only comment on my experience with it, which was nothing but bad. Plane of Sky, I'm sorry, you get an F tier. <laughs> you get an F tier by default because I just can't stand you. And uh, I'm adding this one just at the end. It's just a couple of pictures because this is from the Kazakh Thul Temple, which is just off of Firot. Apparently, Kazakh Thul was redone somewhere along the way, so uh, I just wanted to comment and add him uh, this this boss in. It's part of the Ring of Slime, in uh, in Kazakh Thul. Not be not to be confused with the actual deity of Kazakh Thul, but this is the Temple of Kazakh Thul. I don't know anything about the classic zone because I have no experience with it. I do know that later on they redid. Kazakh Thule, I think around the Plains of Power era, and they introduced a couple of these bosses like this boss, the Acidic Mass, drops fantastic items. It has like a Mana, regen mana Regeneration 4 Glove, super good items, not a hard event, so I kind of want to add it, but I kind of don't, just because it's not a part of the original EverQuest. The original Temple of Kazakh Thule was a pushover from everything I've seen. The most difficult monster that spawns in the original Kazakh Thul, I think, is like level 34, Avatar of Fear. It's like a tiny little Kazakh Thul. Anyways, now we just got some background footages. I wanted to kind of wrap up my thoughts here. So I gave Nagafin an A. Lady Vox, I gave a B. Uh, 
Finical Atropos, C. I have to give a C tier. I really don't think there's much to say about Finical uh, other than I really dislike the zone. It's an easy enough fight. I know he was technically, I, well, I think he was technically meant to be like the end game boss of Classic EverQuest. So, and I know he's near and dear to a lot of people, so I don't want to piss anybody off, but I have to give him a C tier. I don't think there's anything really good about him. Getting to him sucks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, then we have Plan of Fear, which I'm just going to give a smashing A+. It's my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, of the old world zones. Uh, the golems are awesome. They can death touch. I mean, they can still death touch and hit you for a hefty chunk. Uh, they drop really cool items. There's the Dracolich. Also drops pretty good items. And Kazakhul himself. Pretty good. So A+. And uh, Enerook. I'm going to say... I think I said Enerook is an A. So I'll give Enerook an A as well. Uh, Planet Hate is kind of a frustrating zone. But the bosses in it aren't that bad. Enerook has a pretty cool encounter. So I'm going to give him an A as well. Trying to think what else. And again, I know that we're here in the planet growth just in the clip that I'm showing here. I am not including this in the original classic EverQuest, even though it is a plane. I considered doing a video that's ranking just the planes, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to try to go, I guess, by canon, by the stuff that was available at classic. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. In general, I have pretty fond memories of all the original Classic bosses. Everything during Classic EverQuest is still very much tank and spank. There's not really any mechanics to speak of. The only one that's even slightly a mechanic is uh, Enerook himself because you have to kill like the other bosses or the other adds to get him down dead. But that's not even really a mechanic. That's just kind of like a time block. Everything else, I will say, I think, tank and spank. Nothing complicated about them. Very good memories. I love tank and spank fights because it's you get, you get to just sit there and have fun. You have fun with the group. It's mostly just a DPS check because you got to kill the boss before the clerics run out of mana. So I think all the original classic bosses I'm pretty fond of, except for Finical and Planet Sky. Dear God, Planet Sky, F tier. Just flat out F tier. You can fight me on it if you want. <laughs> but I will not change my mind. F tier. Anyways, that's my ranking of classic. Uh, I might end up doing something as far as, uh, you know, rating Kunark, Valius, Plans of Power, etc. I might go down the list of those. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know some of it's, this is a lot slower than normal because I'm not really showing anything super fancy. It's mostly just my thoughts. Uh, anyways, if you like it, let me know. If you hate it, let me know. If you want to fight me on playing a sky or Venical, let me know. <laughs> we can we can PvP and uh, EverQuest if you want. But uh, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm just not a big fan of those zones, so... Again, plan a sky, F tier. Anyways, guys, I will catch you in the next one. See ya.